Hello and good morning. Tess here, just adjusting the camera a little bit. Welcome to Facebook Live with Omni Social Media. My name is Tess. I'm the founder and so excited to be coming to you live. Um, it is a rainy day here in Livermore, California. Um, it's Thursday, January 12th, I think. And um, yeah, just been up today, up and at em. It's about 9.45 now. I'm about to go into my second networking meeting for the day. Um, it's so cool to just be able to get out into the community and meet people. I'm going to the Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance. So if you have a nonprofit in the Bay Area, um, the San Francisco Bay Area, you need to know about Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance. They're a powerful group of people who support nonprofits in just an awesome way. And so I'm excited to be at their first meeting of the year at the Bankhead Theater in Livermore. Um, so they meet once a month. I think it's the second Thursday of every month and um, just support nonprofits and give advice and um, support and training and talks and just a bunch of really cool stuff. So I'm excited to enjoy that meeting. Last night I was at, I went to an event um, put on by Kevin Hempel um, and it was called Be Somebody. And I wasn't expecting to be inspired. Like I knew people were going to be talking about their passions and like I really didn't know what to expect and I went to an event last night at Ultraspective in Livermore. It's actually a uh, photography studio and I had never been there before and it was just such a cool venue and there was 11 people. They got to talk for one minute and 11 seconds about their passion and a couple people went over the time limit, of course, because how can you condense your passion into just one minute and 11 seconds? Um, but it was just so inspiring last night just to hear different people, um, the different um, things that inspire them, whether it's just um, transformative travel or um, working with youth in the inner city or just different things that were just so impactful. Um, I got to hear Moni Knopp speak and he's just inspiring in, him, um, in himself with everything he's up to. Um, so if you haven't heard of Moni Knopp, look him up. He's a local real estate agent here in Livermore, um, but just tons of awesome, awesome um, experiences. So anyway, that's what I've been up to like the last 12 hours and I feel like... Um, Last night's event carried over into today. I'm just like so excited um, and inspired in my business. Um, okay, so real quick, that was, um, yeah, just to fill you in on what's going on with me. Um, but I have today actually five things that I wanna talk about, about how to be more productive. I just started a um, new book for my book club. Um, so we meet every week on Wednesdays at noon, so we met yesterday, and we started reading a new book called Smarter, Better, Faster, and it's just how to be more productive. So um, so I actually put, a, put together five things to help you be more productive in your day-to-day -day activities, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, or you're a business owner, or you're a CEO of a huge um, million dollar or you know huge company um, here's ways to be more productive um, so number one you can be more productive if you eliminate eliminate certain things out of your um, life you know what it is most likely um, but give yourself permission to say no if somebody asks you to do things you are allowed to say no I'm sorry I can't because I'm focused on other things so eliminate things that aren't helping you move forward if they're not making tomorrow better you probably need to look at eliminating it from your schedule. Number two is automate. What can you automate? What processes in your business or in your daily life that you can automate so that they will go faster every time you do them in the future? Um, so it's more, um, it's worth it to take five minutes today to do something that will help you save time in the future. For instance, um, getting business cards from networking events. Don't just let them sit on your desk or in a drawer somewhere or don't just let them sit there. When you get them, put them in your contact management database and then put them in the drawer. So at least you have that information somewhere. You can use it in the future and it'll save you time when you go back to use it. Um, that's definitely been helpful for me in my business. I feel like I'm able to reach a lot of people at one time because I've taken them the time in the past to put those names and phone numbers and email addresses into just a simple database. Um, and then I can send them notes, add them to my um, newsletter list, just all sorts of things, invite them to different events, what pertains to them. And because I took that two minutes, um, 
to do that, I have more more time in the future and it saves me time. Um, so what can you automate in your business, number two? Number three is what can you delegate? What can you give to other people to do for you? And just like I was talking about with those business cards, that might be something that you delegate and it takes longer to explain to somebody how to do it and get them set up, but then over time, when you get a business card, they put the information into the CRM and put it in the drawer for you, and then you get to use that information, that's a great thing that you can delegate, right? Um, with delegation, you have to be okay with not um, things not being done up to your standards. So I definitely got over this very quickly um, with my business, but the more I delegate, the more I'm able to basically, um, what's it called, like, um, make two of myself, right? Double myself because I gave work to somebody else. They're doing that work and then I'm able to do other things and I get, I'm way more productive. So what can you delegate? Um, and it's worth it to take extra time to explain to somebody what to do than um, to just be like, oh, I'll just do it myself. It's, it, you know, no, take that time, explain to somebody else. Let's say they quit six months later or whatever. If you have the process written down, you can just tell your next assistant that same process. So, um, oh, Carolyn, she says, you are always productive. Thanks. I like to be efficient and, yes, productive. So thanks, Carolyn. Um, so number one was eliminate what you don't need. Number two is automate. Number three is delegate. I have two more for you. Um, so... Number four, this I thought was really interesting. It was procrastinate on purpose. So um, multitasking, you think, oh, I can multitask and I can do this and this and this. And somebody that um, I love working for, Pat Burgess, told me um, haste makes waste. And that's something I never forget. I'm like, haste makes waste. So anytime I feel like I'm in a haste, I'm like, slow down make sure you're doing it you know that's a sign to slow down if I ever feel hasty because haste when you're fast you're gonna miss something or there's gonna be a mistake or something so that's an example haste makes waste so just slow down and don't multitask get one thing done in time focus and then move on to the next thing and then that way you'll do everything better basically and then number five give yourself permission to protect your focus so half of the battle oh so this is interesting too so half the battle of becoming more productive is that emotionally um, emotionally it takes a toll on on us so we need to think okay you know if I'm giving somebody if I'm giving my assistant to check my emails and I don't, they don't come first to me, they're getting filtered through somebody else, that's a whole, um, that's a whole lot of time that you get back. And it's almost like, oh crap, what am I supposed to do with all this time I have? Emotionally, you feel guilty for making somebody else check your emails. Um, and, and you just have to be aware that it is an emotional process to become more productive. So um, fight through that and it will, um, you need to figure out how to manage your guilt um, is what this article says. And um, once you do all of these things, you'll just be more productive in general. So know that it is emotionally challenged um, to become more, more productive. But if you're aware of that, you can just um, conquer right through that, tackle that experience. Um, so thanks for staying on and listening, especially Carolyn. Love that you joined me live for this. Um, and I um, am just so excited. And I hope that you um, are just passionate or finding somebody, something to be passionate about and going after it um, and just making 2017 the best year it can can be and I'm realizing lately that time we have a ton of time and I just feel like sometimes I might waste time or I'm not always being as productive as I can be um, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how I can improve and um, just keep getting it done and moving forward and being productive and efficient and all that good stuff so I have to go in now to the uh, TV and PA which I'm very excited and um, I'm gonna leave that leave that for you guys today. So I will be back soon, um, probably tomorrow with more tips about social media, self-development, professional networking, um, all of that good stuff. And I hope you guys have a great, a great day today. And if you're in the Bay area, stay dry. All right. Thanks guys.